My name is Florence Entiaminsa, and I'm taking you through this course, INFS 327. I'm from the Department of Information and Department of Distance Education. INFS 327, Information Services and User Studies. The title of the course, as you may already know, is Information Services and User Studies. You may infer from the title of the course that it incorporates the services in the provision of information to information users and the study of the information users and their needs. A very interesting aspect of this course is that it does not only attempt to define the types of information we as information providers can provide for our clients, but it goes on to explain the types of users that we may expect in our information centers as well. It is expected that after we know our information resources, our information services, and our information users, we will be in a better position as information providers to provide the necessary skills for our clients to help them access the information that they need. We can also repackage the information to meet the various needs of our users. It is expected that after we know, it is expected that after we as information providers know our information resources, our information services, and the users of our information, we will be in a better position to provide the necessary skills for our clients to help them access the needed information. We can also repackage the information to meet the various needs of our users. The course is structured into 13 sections. The first section, we are going to look at the value of information, how important information is to individuals and the society at large. The second section, we will look at the information needs and information seeking behavior of individuals and those in the corporate world. The third session, I want to look at the sources that we consult when we are confronted with information needs. We look at the information sources and then the format of information sources. Our fourth session, we are going to evaluate the information sources that we looked at so that we'll be able to know how authentic those sources are before we put them we use them to satisfy our information needs. Our next session, we are going to look at information dissemination and techniques. The information that we have in our possession or in our collection, how do we make this information known to our users? And that is dissemination. And the techniques that we are going to use to make the information known to them. The next one is we are going to look at information services that we provide for our users. And then we move on to the legal and ethical uses in information provision. There are some legalities in the provision of information, whether we are providing the information ethically or legally. Some of them may be copyright, censorship, and intellectual freedom. Then our users. How do we satisfy our users? That's the next one, user satisfaction. We are going to look at how to repackage some of the information to make our users satisfied. Because it's not all information that our users can access. So we need to repackage, look at our audience, then try to repackage the information to meet their various information needs. The next one we are going to look at, that is the 12th session, is the problems of information provision in the developing world like Ghana. There are certain challenges in the way we provide information to our users. We're going to look at some of the challenges and how these challenges can be managed or kept. The 13th section is the information services in the digital age. We are now in the digital environment or the IT environment. We're going to look at how we, are going, we provide information to our users in this digital environment. So students, I just run you through the 13 sessions of INFS 327. I hope you will enjoy this session. I'll make it 
practically as possible for easy understanding. Our first session is the value of information. In order to lay a good foundation of the course, it is important to grasp the concept and value of information. This session is concerned with the concept of information and its related concepts. The session further discusses the various perspectives in which information can be categorized into different types. The session concludes with the attributes of valuable information. The key topics to be covered in the sections are as follows. The value of information, that's the topic one. Topic two, uses of information. Topic three, the characteristics and types of information. And the fourth topic, the characteristics of valuable information. What is information? Information is data that have been converted into a meaningful and useful context for specific end user. We talk about information, information must inform, that is to add to what we already know about an event or place. It must tell the recipient something he or she did not know before and could not predict. The awareness and understanding of a set of information and ways that information can be made useful to support a specific task or reach a decision is also known as information. Knowledge is the capacity to request, structure, and use information. The above definitions of information and knowledge shows us that there is a relationship between information and knowledge. Let's look at examples. If you have a piece of information, like I'm giving it to you now as students, I'm giving you information. When you are able to understand that piece of information, when you are able to analyze that piece of information, then you can apply it in a way. That is when you acquire knowledge. So we are saying that exploring this relationship will be one of the major concerns of today's class, relationship between information and knowledge. When you get a piece of information, you need to understand that information and you need to apply the information in your everyday life. That is when you acquire knowledge. So this is a basic relationship between information and knowledge. What are the uses of information? As we are here today, if you don't know that this production is coming on, how will you assess it? So you need a piece of information for everyday life. You are watching me today because you know that there's a production on your course, INFS 2327. Also, where to assess it, you need that piece of information. So nobody can operate or survive without information. The use of information is dependent on the need for that information. It must be recognized that an information need exists, and that need must be defined. For example, as a student, if you are preparing for exams, what are some of the information needs that you request or you find out? You first find out the venue for the examination. You also find the time and the exam that, the time the exams will commence, then the means of transportation to the exam center. The use of information may not be defined based on the work activity of the potential user, the discipline or interest, and then the availability of the facility that provides the information. However, some people may not use certain information. And we've said factors that hinder the use of information. That is our, our subtopic. The use of information may be hindered by the following factors. Depending on one's background, be it cultural background, religious background, educational background, you may choose to use a piece of information or not. For example, if you have a piece of information which goes against your religion, definitely you will not use it. And that hinders your, word, your use of information. And that is your background. Then you have motivation of the user. Normally during exams time, students will bear me witness. You know, I rush to the photocopier and every place is full. People are requesting for information. You go to the library, the library is full. The motivation here is that students are going to write exam. So that motivation to either use or not the information is also hinders information. I'll just 
explain few. The last one that I want to explain is the monetary payment. If you don't have the money to use that information, to pay for such information, you cannot use it. Then we have certain legal and regulatory system that also hinder our use of information. One can be copyright or censorship. What are some of the characteristics of information? Information can be viewed based on the manner of presentation, proximity to the origin, and the content itself. What do we mean by manner of presentation? It means you have to identify that particular information with the manner in which the information has been presented. And one of such information is oral information. It refers to spoken words. The mode in which the information is presented, it is through face-to-face -face TV or radio presentation. Then you have the textual where it is a written information, printed, hard copy, etc. We have example of a book, a report that has been printed. However, the web technology has now brought together the above four types in one medium. The next type is the content. We character information based on the content. What is the content? Is it facts? Is it analytical? Is it subjective? Is it objective? And you can say that the information is objective because it is devoid of personal opinion. The subjective is based on personal opinions, interpretations, points of views, emotion, and judgment. Then we have the factual information. That is a statement of things done, known to have occurred, or to be true or existing. We can also characterize information based on the originality and proximity. We have three types. We have the primary, the secondary, and the tertiary. We talk about how useful information is. If that information is not of value, you may use it to do, take decisions which you may regret in future. So what are some of the characteristics of a valuable information? For me, it should be easily accessible by authorized users so that they can obtain it in the right format and at the right time to meet their right needs. Any piece of information you use to take decisions should be accurate, free of errors. It should be complete. Half-baked information is very, you have to be very careful when you are using half-baked information. It should be reliable. Some, some of you, you don't rely on your friends. You can say that this friend is not reliable. Because the person, if you get the information today, tomorrow, you don't get the information. You should be careful about such information. These are some of the characteristics of valuable information. To conclude, depending on the type of data you need, some quality attributes become more valuable than others. For example, with market intelligence data, some inaccuracy and incompleteness is accepted, but timeliness is essential. To conclude this first session, wherever we can realize that wherever we look, information surrounds us. On road signs, in news, on televisions, and computer screens, we spend much of our lives for information and deciding how to use it. And in today's information age, it is now a tangible product we work with, making the ability to find and use information critical to professional success.